Hello there. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is your boy Ellie Moses, your 23 year old law and film shooter here from Sydney, Australia. Shitty shot, baby. And today we are going to be watching 12 Angry Men for the very first time. This is one of the highest rated movies of all time and I'm keen to see why it is. We are watching the 1957, the OG original black and white version. So yeah, I'm here to have a good time. You guys are here to have a good time. You guys are here to see my reaction. I'm here to react to it for the first time. Let's have some fun. Let's waste no more time. Let's get right into the reaction. Please recommend me some other films to watch. And if I haven't seen them, I will watch them for the first time on this channel. Preferably some cult classical hits um, that will get a lot of viewers to the channel as well. So yeah, let's waste no more time. Let's get into the reaction. Let's have some fun. I'm hella excited. Let's smash this thing. Let's go. Oh, we're going to court, baby. We're going to court. Bidding for a law student. <laughs> oh man. Is he meant to look innocent? Like at first glance for the viewer? Are we meant to think he's innocent? I thought he was blind at first instinct right there. He, he might be. Or it's just, he's showing perfect emotion, that character. It's like... Is he a cold-hearted killer? Or is he just like an innocent little boy? It's, oh, I love it. I also loved right there how as the judge was, you know, reading the mundane procedure at the end of what the jury is to do, he had this slow tracking shot, side tracking shot, like sort of moving along a track of all the men's facial expressions and I, I was just paying attention to all of it. It's fantastic. You know something? I called the weather bureau this morning. This is gonna be the hottest day of the year. Well, you'd think that at least air condition these places. Yeah, huh? your names? Oh, it's uh, that one, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, gentlemen, everybody's here. Now, if there's anything you want, I'll be right outside the door. Just not. We're, we're still going in one take. We're still going in one take. Yo, if this is going to be a... Imagine this is like a one take, hour and a half jury deliberation session. I would actually flip out if it's like one take. I, I doubt it is. But first of all, we had sort of um, the steady camera in the top of, um, in sort of the top of the room, mid center of the room, looking down as all the jury members came in, you know, taking off their blazers, winding down, smoking, saying it's going to be the hottest day of the year. And it slowly panned down um, into interacting with the characters and it still hasn't changed. It still hasn't cut away. I feel like every time I watch an older film like this, the camera work and um, from a technical standpoint, there's so much more thought given to it and it's so expertly done always like these older films the directors they're just masters with the camera absolute masters i never knew they locked the door sure they locked the door what you think <clears throat> i was very impressed i think he he did an expert job a lot of drive too you know? real guy okay fellas can we hold it down a minute sure um uh, fellas say uh, we like to get started mm -hmm. Gentlemen at the window. Oh, I cut away. I thought it was still going. Oh, that was all done in one take, man. That was fantastic. We can, well, discuss it first and uh, then vote on it. That's, of course, uh, that's uh, one way. And, uh, well, we can uh, vote on it right now. Then. I think it's customary to take a preliminary vote. Yeah, let's, let's vote. Who knows? Maybe we can all get out of here, huh? <laughs> okay, then uh, I think that, um, of course, you know that we uh, have a first-degree murder charge here, and if we vote the accused guilty, uh, we've got to send him to the chair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. The mysterious okay, man at so the window. Guilty. <laughs> Who's voting not guilty? One. Right. You sat in the 
fought with the rest of us. You heard what we did. The kid's a dangerous killer. You can see it. He's 18 years old. Well, that's old enough. He, he stabbed his own father four inches into the chest. You know, this actor right here, this one here, he looks like he's the father of a modern day actor today. Like, there's some... I don't know if it's Bruce Campbell or someone... He looks like he looks like one of the actors today, or like I've seen before, is like a spitting image of this guy. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but like this guy looks like someone's father. They proved it a dozen different ways in court. Would you like me to list them for you? No. Then what do you want? I just want to talk. Well, what's there to talk about? Eleven men in here think he's guilty. No one had to think about it twice except you. I want to ask you something. Do you believe his story? I don't know whether I believe it or not. Maybe I don't. So how come you vote not guilty? Well, there were 11 votes for guilty. It's not easy to raise my hand and send a boy off to die without talking about it first. Couldn't change my mind if you talk for 100 years. I'm not trying to change your mind. It's just that we're talking about somebody's life here. We can't decide it in five minutes. Supposing we're wrong. Supposing we're wrong. Supposing this whole building should fall down on my head. You can suppose anything. That's right. I just think we owe him a few words, that's all. I don't mind telling you this, mister. We don't owe him a thing. He got a fair trial, didn't he? What do you think that trial cost? He's lucky he got it. Know what I mean? No. Now look, we're all grown-ups in here. We heard the facts, didn't we? You're not gonna tell me that we're supposed to believe this kid, knowing what he is? Listen, I've lived among them all my life. You can't believe a word they I say. I love you seeing the different that. perspectives from everyone. I mean, they're born liars. Only an ignorant man can believe that. Now, listen. Do you think you were born with a monopoly on the truth? I think certain things should be pointed out to this man. You know what I love? I love how it started off with a simple 11 to 1 jury vote. And you think to yourself, okay, these guys are going to try to convince this man to vote guilty. Let's just get out of here quickly. But... As this man or this anonymous man who's voted not guilty just throws the start just starts to throw up questions in the air, everyone starts to react and says things that some other individual might not um, agree with. And as one spoken person speaks up, that might trigger another person to speak up because they don't agree with what they said, or they might have a different moral code to that person, or might have different perspectives from another person and it's just gonna be a long trigger effect as we go from each person to another um and it's gonna be interesting to see I'm, I'm loving it so far because you can see already um what's happening with different people reacting to what others are saying whether they agree or disagree it's, it's gonna be interesting come on this isn't sunday we don't need a sermon come on we have a job to do now let's do it thank you it is obvious to me anyway that the boy's entire story was flimsy he claimed he was at the movies during the time of the killing, and yet one hour later, he couldn't remember the names of the films he saw or who played in them. That's right. And no one saw him going in or out of the theater. Listen, what about the woman across the street? If her testimony don't prove it, nothing does. That's right. She was the one who actually saw the killing. Now, fellas, please, let's go in order here, huh? Just a minute. This is so good. Here's a woman. <laughs> this is so good. Here's a woman who's lying in bed. She can't sleep. She's dying with the heat. You know what I mean? Anyway... She looks out the window, and right across the street, she sees the kid stick the knife into his father. He's one of them, too, isn't she? You're a pretty smart fella, aren't you? What do you mean, no, them? Do you mean them? Uh, gentlemen. What do you mean, them? What's he like... so wise about? I'm telling you. Hey, okay, now, come on. Now, we're not going to get anywhere fighting. Whose turn is it next? Oh, uh, his, number uh, five. Like, a specific class of people? them or like a specific yeah is it a specific class of people like she's one of them so similar to the boy yet he doesn't believe the boy's story yet he believes the girls or the women's which is part of them a group like is this homosexual group a group with disability I'm interested to find out like a lower class individuals can I pass it I just I can't see two slaps in the face provoking him into committing murder May have been too, too many. Everyone has a breaking point. Anything else? No. Okay. Uh, how about you? I don't know. It's all been said. <laughs> I just want to get to the game. Forever. It's still the same thing. This kid is five for all. Well, look at his record. When he was ten, he was in children's court. 
He threw a rock at a teacher. When he was 15, he was in reform school. He stole a car. He picked up twice for knife fighting. Oh, yeah, they say he's real handy with a knife. Huh. Oh, this is a very fine boy. Ever since he was five years old, his father beat him up regularly. He used his fists. Well, so would I. A kid like that? <laughs> it's these kids the way they are now. It could be an act of self-defense. As a kid, I used to call my father, sir. That's right, sir. You ever hear a kid call his father that anymore? Fathers don't seem to think it's important anymore. You got any kids? Three. I got one. You know what I love about this? I feel like as the movie continues to drag along, we're going to find out each, uh, a little bit about each juror's past and like a bit about themselves. Because I like how at the beginning already... Juror one, juror two, juror three. You know, you have to conceal the identity. But slowly and slowly, we're going to find out more. And you know what initially I thought with this film? I thought it was going to be a one take thing where it was really cleverly done in terms of like each of the actors were given profiles for their character, but not the other actors knew, if that makes sense. And through the one take and art of film and everything along those lines, as they have like sort of a time frame to complete this take, um, they find out each about one another as they ask questions and try to solve this case. But um, I feel like they were given a destination. This was my guess. I thought they were going to be given a destination. Okay, you have to end up here. Um, and this individual is going to slowly convince you guys otherwise. But these are the profile for your characters and no one else knows that. You got to try and figure it out and ask questions during that. That's what I thought initially what it was going to be. But I'm still loving it. No secret for children from slum backgrounds are potential menaces to society. Now, I think... Brother, you can say that again. The kids who crawl out of these places are real trash. I don't want any part of them, I'm telling you. I feel like some of these people might have been born in the slum. Yeah, 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 there we go. Please, I've played in backyards that were filled with garbage. I mean, maybe you can still smell it on me. Now, listen, Sonny. Come on, now, there's nothing personal about this. Oh, there was something personal. Come on, fella, he didn't mean you. Let's not be so sensitive. This sensitivity, I can understand. Okay, look, let's stop the arguing. We're only wasting time. Listen, you think it's funny hey, or something? Forget it, fella. The whole thing's unimportant. Come on. Unimportant? Well, here, you try. No, oh, yeah, nobody wants to change. You're doing a beautiful job. Sit down. <laughs> yeah, you're doing great. Just oh, great, fella. You stay in there and pitch, huh? All right, let's hear from someone. Stay there and pitch. <laughs> Baseball well, reference. You, uh, I need to tell you how I feel about it. It's all right with me. He let too many things go by, a little thing. What little things? Listen, when these fellows don't ask questions, it's because they know the answer's already and they figure they'll be hurt. Maybe it's also possible for a lawyer to be just plain stupid. Imagine it? someone I mean, it's possible. is related so to the kid. Brother lawyers. <laughs> <coughs> I, I kept putting myself in the kid's place. I'd have asked for another lawyer, I think. I mean, if I was on trial for my life, I'd want my lawyer to tear the prosecution witnesses to shreds, or at least try to. Look, there was one alleged eyewitness to this killing. Someone else claims he heard the killing, saw the boy run out afterwards, and there was a lot of circumstantial evidence. But actually, those two witnesses were the entire case for the prosecution. Supposing they're wrong. What do you mean, supposing they're wrong? What's the point of having witnesses at all? Could they be wrong? What are you trying to say? Those people sat on the stand under oath. They're only people. People make mistakes. Could they be wrong? Well, no, I don't think so. You know so. Oh, come on. Nobody can know a thing like that. This isn't an exact science. That's right. It isn't. I think it's quite clear that the boy never went to the movies that night. No one in the house saw him go out at 11.30. No one at the theater identified him. He couldn't even remember the names of the pictures he saw. There are so many... Is this. The boy stayed home... There are so many great long takes in this movie. Like, what the heck, man? This is so well rehearsed, so well acted. Everything is phenomenal so far. Like, it's just unbelievable. Had a fight with his father, stabbed him to death, and left the house at 10 minutes after 12. He even remembered to wipe the knife clean of fingerprints. Now, are you trying to tell me that this knife really fell through a hole in the boy's pocket, someone picked it up off the street, went to the boy's house, and stabbed his father with it just to test its sharpness? No, I'm just saying it's possible the boy lost his knife and that somebody else stabbed his father with a similar knife. It's just possible. Take a look at this knife. It's a very unusual knife. I've never seen one like it. 
Damn! Where did Where did you get it? I went out walking for a couple of hours last night. I walked through the boys' neighborhood. I bought that in a little pawn shop just two blocks from the boys' house. It cost six dollars. It's against the law to buy or sell switchblade knives. That's right, I broke the law. Listen, you pulled a real bright trick. Now, suppose you tell me what it proves. Maybe there are ten knives like that, so what? Maybe there are. But what does it mean? You found another knife blanket. What's that, the discovery of the age or something? You mean you're asking us to believe that somebody else did the stabbing with exactly the same kind of knife? The odds are a million to one. It's possible, but not very probable. Yeah, but you, okay, you need fellas, beyond the reasonable doubt. The there's that right doubt. There's a, there's a doubt right there. No, He's trying to... That he'd find a knife exactly like the one the boy bought. What's interesting about it? Interesting. I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. There are still 11 of us here who think he's guilty. By secret written down. I'll abstain. There are 11 votes for guilty. I won't stand alone. We'll take in a guilty verdict to the judge right now. But if anyone votes not guilty, we stay here and talk it out. <laughs> well, that's it. If you want to try it, I'm ready. It's going to be interesting right, to see the, the shift. I feel like they... Everyone else think it's going to be a cool 11 to 1 sweep again, but I don't think so. Do you reckon this individual right here might have some involvement with the case that night? Something along the lines of that? Or is like an expert investigator or something along the lines of that and he's been picked for jury? Guilty. Guilty. It's like I'm the guilty. it's like the golden ticket it's in golden Wonka. Ticket. <laughs> Boy, how do you like that? Oh, another chap swoops his wings. All right. And you Boy, don't know who. I want to know. Excuse me. This was a secret ballot. We all agreed on that, no? If the gentleman wants it to remain secret. Secret. What do you mean, secret? There are no secrets in a jury room. I know who it was. Brother, you really are something. You sit here, vote I guilty. I feel like, like it might be the guy with the glasses. Some golden voice preacher starts tearing your poor heart out about some underprivileged kid just couldn't help becoming a murderer, and you change your vote. <laughs> if that isn't the most sick. And... Why don't you drop a quarter in this collection box? I want to hear more. Right now, the vote is 10 to 2. I'm talking here. You have no right to leave this yeah, room. I hear you. Never will. Sit down. <laughs> he still hasn't read out no, all the... We continue. Okay, I reckon. Well, I think we ought to take a break. You know, one man's inside, and I think we ought to wait for him. Okay, uh, here's an idea. Let's uh, run it up the flagpole and see if anyone salutes it. <laughs> it's idiotic, but it's funny. I, mean, I, uh... I feel like the hit... Like, with this film, right... Is there a hidden message along the lines or something around classism, possibly, um, with all these men coming from different backgrounds? Um, there possibly might be here because they've established sort of like a society talking about these slums where individuals are from. And this individual on the right here clearly reacted to some uh, remarks from another individual talking about the slums. And despite him making it out of the slums, he's still like, Yo, what the heck? I came from there. I was raised there. I played games in those streets. Um, so I feel like it might be a commentary as well on classism and just basically don't judge a book by its cover and just judging other individuals you meet in life and things along the lines like you never really know the full story behind someone. I feel like. I don't know. I'm a little excited back there. I didn't mean to get nasty. Glad you're not one of those less these emotional appeal influence them. Thing is, it's a hot day as well, so they're all going to become increasingly agitated. What's the matter with that fan? Can't seem to get it started. Nice bunch of guys, huh? Well, they're about the same as anyone else. Oi, what a murderous day. You think we'll be much longer? I don't know. Oh, he's guilty for sure. Not a doubt in the whole world. We should have... A doubt? We should have been done already. Oh, I don't mind, you know. Beats working. Well, I'm not 
of use to supposing. I'm just a working man. My boss does a supposing, but I'll try one. Supposing you talk us all out of this and the uh, kid really did knife his father, huh? See, from this, right, um, when you get a bunch of everyday guys who've never met each other before, and clearly they don't have much of an understanding of the law, because in the, like, criminal case, when there's a jury, and a jury um, obviously has sort of questions, or they're not sure about certain matters, it goes to the judge to sort of explain something to the jury, or provide further clarification upon something. Um, and in this instance, I feel like these guys have a lack of understanding about beyond a reasonable doubt. You know, the guy's just throwing terms around like, okay, there's not a doubt in the world he's guilty. When this guy, um, on the left here, um, I don't know if I am to believe he's an architect. He could be, or he could be someone that's really in tune with the law and really, um, you know, up to speed with his, uh, legal knowledge, but, um, he's thrown multiple doubts already, or, like, a couple of doubts already in the room, uh, you know, regarding the knife, um, and something along the lines of the story about, like, um, who was the eyewitness and the woman, um, so, yeah, it's just, it goes to show, like, the, uh, lack of knowledge, um, for the legal, um, like, the legal, profession here from all individuals now it's up to the judge as well to do that to explain um what beyond the reasonable doubt is and these guys just say guilty 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 <laughs> is anybody here any idea how long it would take an elf great it just shows you where their heads are at this isn't a game Clearly, he values an individual life because someone's oh, life is at stake here. An 18-year-old boy. This isn't I mean. a game. No, 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 calm down. Who does he think he is? Oh, right, I'm Come telling on, you, don't look, forget it, Mouse. Yeah. Has anybody any idea how long it takes an elevator train going at medium speed to pass a given point? What does that to do with anything? How long? Take a guess. I wouldn't have the slightest idea. What do you think? I don't know, maybe 10, 12 seconds? He says he heard the boy say, I'm going to kill you. And a split second later, heard a body hit the floor. One second later, right? That's right. Second. The woman across the street swore positively. She looked out of the window and saw the killing through the last two cars of a passing elevated train, right? The last two cars. How well, can the old man hear it? Just, now, just a minute. We've agreed that it takes 10 seconds for a train to pass a given point. Since the woman saw the killing through the last two cars, we can assume that the body hit the floor just as the train went by. Therefore, the train had been roaring by the old man's window a full 10 seconds before the body hit the floor. How can he hear? I'm going to kill man, you. According to his own testimony, I'm going to kill you. Body hitting the floor a split second later would have had to hear the boy make this statement with the yell roaring past his nose. It's not possible he could have heard it. That's idiotic. Of course he heard it. Do you it. think he could have heard it? He said he yelled at the top of his voice. That's good enough for me. Even if he heard something, he still couldn't have identified the voice with the yell roaring by him. You're talking about a matter of seconds. Nobody can be that accurate. Well, I think testimony that could put a boy into the electric chair should be that accurate. 100%. I like this guy. I don't think he could have heard it. Yeah, I like... See? Oh, what are you people talking about? Well, that's the reason he couldn't have heard why should he lie? What's he got to gain? Attention, maybe. You keep coming in with these bright sayings. Why don't you send them into a paper? They pay three dollars. Every time this guy has a bright saying as well, it's like a, um, it's like a close-up shot of his face, and he, you just see his black, <laughs> his black eyes just staring across the screen. It's, it's freaky. It looks like Gollum. <laughs> guy talks like that to an old man really ought to get stepped on. You know, you gotta have more respect, Mister. You say stuff like that to him again, I'm gonna lay you out. There we go. Who's never had recognition for his name in the newspapers. Nobody knows him. Nobody quotes him. Just wants attention. Nobody seeks his advice after 75 years. This is his moment. <laughs> Gentlemen, that's a very sad thing to mean nothing. A man like this needs to be quoted, to be listened to. To be quoted just once, very important to him. It would be so hard for him to recede into the background. Oh, wait a minute. What are you chance... trying to do? Tell us a lie just so he could be important once? No. 
he wouldn't really lie, but perhaps he made himself believe he heard those words and recognized the boy's face. That's the most fantastic story I've ever heard. How can you make up a thing like that? What do you know about it? You know what? I feel like imagine someone in this room gets stabbed with one of the knives. Like, tensions are rising, tensions are boiling, no pun intended, because it is a hot day. Um, and maybe an individual in this room might be a murderer himself. I'm just having a guess here. But, like, you never know. There could be a murderer in this room. Um, just saying. Just saying. You never know. Does anybody want a cough drop? I doubt it, but... Okay. Hey, you can, you can never doubt. <laughs> anybody can think he's not guilty. We prove that the old man couldn't have heard the boy say, I'm going to kill you. But supposing you didn't he did. prove it at all. What are you talking oh, about? Supposing he really did hear it. This phrase, how many times have all of us used it? Probably thousands. I could kill you for that, darling. <laughs> you, you do that once more and I'm going to kill you. Get in there, Rocky, and kill you. I say it every day. That doesn't mean we're really going to kill him. Wait a minute. What are you trying to give us here? The phrase was, I'm going to kill you. The kid yelled it at the top of his lungs. Don't tell me you didn't mean it. Anybody says a thing like that the way he said it, they mean it. Well, gee, now, I don't know. I remember I was arguing with the guy I worked next to at the bank a couple weeks ago. He called me an idiot, so I yelled at him. Now listen, this guy's trying to make you believe <laughs> things that aren't so. The kid said he was going to kill him, and he did kill him. Let me ask you this. Do you really think the boy shot out a thing like that so the whole neighborhood could hear him? I don't think so. He's much too bright for that. Bright? He's a common, ignorant slob. He don't even speak good English. He doesn't even speak good English. Mr. Foreman... I'd like to change my vote to not guilty. <laughs> you, what? You heard me. Are you sure? 9-3, baby. 9-3. Sure. Vote is 9-3, favor of guilty. Well, if this isn't the living end, huh? The pendulum is swinging. You ought to write for one of those kooky detective magazines. You'd make a fortune. <laughs> it's just Quite critical a thinking. A lawyer knew he didn't stand a chance. Really have to believe in his client to put up any kind of a good case. And as you pointed out a minute ago, obviously he didn't. Oh, of course he didn't. <laughs> so how's that a fair there? trial then? It's not a fair trial. Well, maybe some guy's mother is somebody. I... Oh, look, will you look at the time? Huh? Come on. Well, Pardon I mean, me. I have made some notes here. And notes. I would like to please to say something. If he really had killed his father, why would he come back home three hours later? Wouldn't he be afraid of being caught? True, yeah, true. He's knife. It's not nice to go around leaving knives sticking in people's chests. Yeah, especially relatives. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see anything funny about it. You people are talking only about the little details. You're forgetting the important stuff. I mean, all of a sudden, I'm everybody here. Vote. I'm talking here. I have a vote called for. I love well, seeing the differing seats. personalities. It's so good. This is amazing. This is utterly amazing. I, I love so it. much time spent on nothing. Uh, it only takes a second. Okay, I guess the fastest way is to find out who's voting not guilty. All those voting not guilty, please raise your hands. Still the same. One, two, three, not guilty. Nine guilty. Solano, where are we? I'm telling you, we can yak and yak here next Tuesday. Where's it all getting us? Pardon? Nope. I vote uh, not guilty. Oh. What? Oh, <laughs> oh, Eight-four, baby. I mean, we're all going crazy in here or something. The kid is guilty. Why don't you listen to the facts? I want you to get up and tell me why you changed your vote. Come on, now, give me reasons. I don't have to defend my decision to you. Hmm? There is a reasonable doubt in my mind. What reasonable doubt? That's nothing but words. Here, look at this. The kid you just decided isn't guilty was seen ramming this into his father. Now, what about this, Mr. Reasonable Doubt? That's not the knife. Don't you remember? Oh, brilliant. <laughs> I love how that situation just played out there where he picked up the knife thinking that's the exact knife that killed his father when that was the same point um, the other man was trying to get across in the beginning how he just bought the exact same knife or they could have mis mistook it for the exact same knife there his point was just proven right there where he just thought that was the knife that he killed have when it actually wasn't so this is the craziest I mean what are we supposed to believe how does he know how long 15 seconds is? You can't judge a thing like that. He said 15 seconds. He was very positive about it. He was an old man. Half the time he was confused. How could he be positive about anything? There you go. The old man thing again. 
he was an old man. He was confused. How can he be positive about anything? And he's reiterating the same things that he was trying to prove last, uh, just like a matter of uh, minutes ago about the old man not hearing or being able to hear, I'm going to kill you. And then minutes or seconds later, he heard a body drop to the floor with the L-line train passing. So it's funny how he's basically <laughs> going back on his own words. So he's like contradicting himself, basically. He's just realizing, he's like, ah, crap, I just said... He's an old man. How could he? There you I go. Let's see what you're going to prove here. The man said he saw the boy running out. Well, let's see if the details bear him out. As soon as the body hit the floor, he said he heard footsteps upstairs running toward the front door. Heard the upstairs door open, the footsteps start down the stairs. He said he got to his own front door as fast as he could, and he swore it couldn't have been more than 15 seconds. Walk only very slowly. They had to help him into the witness chair. You'll make it sound like a long walk. For an old man who had his stroke, it is a long walk. I mean, he's an architect. He knows do? his stuff. Let me try it. See how long it took. What do you mean you want to try it? Why didn't his lawyer bring it up if it's wrong for Maybe he just didn't think about it. What do you it, mean huh? didn't think of it? To think a man's an idiot or something, it's an obvious thing. Hey, Did you think of listen, it? Listen, smart guy, don't matter whether I thought of it. He didn't bring it up because he knew it had hurt his case. What do you think of that? Hey, Maybe he didn't bring it up because it would have meant bullying and badgering a helpless old man. You know that doesn't sit very well with the jury. Most lawyers avoid it if they can. So what kind of a bum is he then? That's what I've been asking, buddy. Pass me that chair, will you? I love how the Those sweat... chairs, the old man's bed. I just paced off 12 feet across the room. This will be... I love how the sweat has been gradually developing as well as the film has gone on. Like, you really feel like you're in there with the 12 jurors. You really feel like it's a hot day and you really feel like the hour is going as the minutes tick by as you're watching the film. Like, there's no time jumps or anything. It's legit an actual hour. Like, it's great. You see the sweat patches start to fall and everything. It's so good. Door. Oh, that's crazy. You can recreate a thing like that. Oh, I would like to well, see it's it. 43 feet. I'll pace on that wall and back again. Come on, speed it up. He walked twice as fast as that. If you want me to walk faster than that, I will. I got like 22 seconds. Lock, door, stop. Right. About 40 seconds. Time. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 41 seconds. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He heard the fight between the boy and his father a few hours earlier. Then when he's lying in his bed, he heard the body hit the floor in the boy's apartment. Heard the woman scream from across the street. Got to his front door as fast as he could. Heard somebody racing down the stairs and assumed it was the boy. I think that's possible. Assume. <laughs> Brother, I've seen all kinds of dishonesty in my day, but this little display takes the cake. What's the matter with you guys? You all know he's guilty. He's got to burn. You're letting him slip through our fingers. Slip through our fingers? Are you his executioner? <laughs> I'm one of them. Oh. Perhaps you'd like to pull the switch. Oh. Well, this kid, you better would. Remember I said Sorry. about finding more about them like as we go along? The switch. Ever since you walked into this room, you've been acting like a self-appointed public avenger. You want to see this boy die because you personally want it, not because of the facts. You're a sadist. He's using that phrase again. Oh, like he's using that phrase. And remember they were talking about the weight of that meaning before and he was the one that's saying, that's it, he's guilty. He said he was that. And then he was saying before, um, you know, how many times have you said that in public? Probably like a thousand different versions or iterations of that line. Um, this film is so fantastically written and I, I guess I love how you start to unpack the case layer by layer and they start to expose, you know, the deficiencies in the case and the arguments presented by the prosecution um, because these guys are basically forming a defense for this individual that he never had because um, they mentioned before about, you know, it was the crown or I think the courts that appointed the lawyer and he probably didn't care. It didn't mean much to him. He didn't get much money. So he probably half asked the case and these guys are basically presenting um, a case for this child who probably deserves it and um, he's probably an innocent boy from the slums um, and as they were saying, he's been beaten up all his life. He doesn't speak good English, doesn't understand it, and probably is intimidated by this court scene. Probably doesn't even know what's going on. Um, um, he's probably in shock at seeing his father dead. Um, and this guy here, um, he's basically the individual that pulls the plug on these criminals that are convicted. He's the one that, you know, pushes the button on the electric chair, and he's relishing this moment. He wants to see this kid, um, you know 
get done and it makes you think the backgrounds of other individuals because this guy is one of those individuals that does this and makes you think uh other individuals not what they seem to be um oh this is such a this is an amazing film amazing What are you looking at? <laughs> what a shot at everyone's facial expressions. The boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, look how dark it's getting out there. I bet we're going to have a storm now. Boy, oh boy, it's really hot, huh? Pardon me, but... Yeah, he's the only one that hasn't taken off his blazer. Not guilty. Number three? Guilty. Number four? Guilty. Number I five? feel like this guy's gonna switch. Not guilty. Number six? Not guilty. Number twelve? Guilty. This guy hasn't been paying attention, man. I feel like there's some people that just are so stubborn. They're not going to change no matter what they see or hear. It's now six to six. Yeah. All right, and we go into extra innings here. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> six to six. I'm telling you, some of you people in here must be out of your minds. A kid like that. I don't think the kind of boy he is has anything to do with it. The facts are supposed to determine the case. Don't give me that. I'm sick and tired of facts. You can twist them any way you like. You know what I mean? That's exactly no. the point. This to be all objective. No him. subjectivity oh, I mean, about where he comes from or anything. Well, it just seemed to me there was room for doubt. You haven't got a leg to stand on. You know that, I hope. Oh, I don't feel that way. There were a lot of details that never came out. Yeah, well, good luck. Oh, come on. You're like everybody else. You think too much, you get mixed up. You know what I mean? That guy reminds yes, me of I a goblin from Gringotts. <laughs> he looks like one. <laughs> Better. Why do I have a feeling he's like talking to nobody? Hey, like two points. No one's responded to him. He was just trying to bait me. He did an excellent job. <laughs> That guy is so composed with the glasses as well. He hasn't taken off his blazer the whole time. I need to walk into court right now and declare a hung jury. There's no point in this thing going on anymore. Yeah, I go for that too. Listen, let's take it to the judge and let the kid take his chance with Paul. Oh, yeah. I don't think the judge will accept a hung jury. We haven't been in here very long. You don't fully understand the term reasonable doubt. What do you mean, I don't understand? Well, how do you like this guy? <laughs> I was talking about them not understanding that term before. Before they can take a deep breath, they're telling us how to run the show, huh? Boy, the arrogance of this guy. Hey, all right. Let's stop the arguing for about two minutes in here. Well, who's got something constructive to say? I'd like to go over something, if you gentlemen don't mind. An important point for the prosecution was the fact that after the boy claimed he'd been at the movies during the hours that the killing took place, couldn't remember the names of the movies or the, or the stars who appeared in them. This gentleman here has brought that point in here several times. That's correct. But he doesn't understand it's English. the only alibi the boy offered. And he himself couldn't back it up with any details at all. You could remember details under those circumstances? I do. Under great emotional stress? Under great emotional stress. He remembered them correctly in court. He named the pictures and the stars who played in them. Yes. Oh. His lawyer took great pains to bring that out. He had three months from the night of the murder to the day of the trial in which to memorize them. Tuesday night, the night of the bridge tournament. I played bridge. Monday night. When you get down on New Year's Eve, 1954, let me know, eh? <laughs> Monday night. Monday night, uh, my wife and I went to the movies. What did you see? The Scarlet Circle. It is a very clever whodunit. <laughs> the, um... Uh, I'll tell you in a minute. The, uh... Remarkable, Mrs. Uh, something, the uh, Mrs. Uh, Bainbridge, the remarkable Mrs. Bainbridge. I saw that. It's called the Amazing Mrs. Bainbridge. Uh, yes, the Amazing Mrs. Bainbridge. I think that's right. Who was in the Amazing Mrs. Bainbridge? Barbara Long, I think it was. A dark, very pretty girl. Thin or Long, something like that. Who else? I'd never uh, heard of them before. Very inexpensive second feature with uh, unknown. And you weren't under an emotional stress, were you? 
Oh, now he's sweating. Now he's sweating. No. I wasn't. <laughs> I think the point is made. Big point. <coughs> you can talk till your tongue is dragging on the floor. The boy is guilty, period. Know what I mean, my friend? I'll give you a demonstration. <laughs> Somebody get up. He actually wanted to do it for a sec, I reckon. He pondered it. He pondered it. Nobody's hurt. Right? Right, nobody hurt. Now, well, this is the way I'd stab a man who was taller than I was. Look at the angle. Down and in. And this is the way it was done. Now, tell me I'm wrong. Wouldn't you dig Down in from in, below? Give me that. Oh, I hate these things. Wouldn't you go like that or something? Did you ever see a knife fight? No. You? No? Anybody here ever see a knife fight? Oh, I have. You know, on my back stoop, backyard. Switchblades came with the neighborhood where I lived. Funny, I never thought of it before. I guess you try to forget those things. How do you use a switchblade? Well, he never used it like this. See, you lose too much time switching hands. Here's how. Underhanded. Exactly. Anyone who's ever used the switch knife wouldn't handle it any other way. I haven't used the switch yeah. knife. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's why they made it open like that. You think he could have made the kind of wound that killed his father? No. No the experience he'd had all his life handling these things. I feel he'd have gone for him underhanded. How do you know? Were you in the room when the father was killed? No. How about you? I don't know about the rest of them, but I'm getting a little tired of this yakking, yakking back and forth. It's getting us nowhere. So I guess I'll have to break it up. I changed my vote to not guilty. <laughs> you what? You have sat here and voted guilty with everyone else because there are some baseball tickets burning a hole in your pocket. And now you have changed your vote because you say you're sick of all the talking here? Now listen, buddy. Who tells you that you have to right to play like this with a man's life don't you care now wait a minute you can't talk like that to me i can talk like that i feel like you. that guy might be a gambler or something most not guilty then do it because you are convinced the man is not guilty not because you've had enough or don't you have the guts to do what you think is right now listen guilty or not guilty i feel like this I guy's a guy that follows the crowd not guilty why Look, I don't have to. You do have to say it. Why? I don't uh, think he's guilty. Um, nine. Nine to three. All those voting guilty? Raise your hands. One, two, three. Well, the vote's nine to three in favor of acquittal. Wait, that, I don't understand you people. that guy with the blazer, the one with the glasses, he said he went to the movies with his wife on Monday night or something, but he doesn't, he's not wearing a wedding ring. Um, I don't know if that's just me, like, observing too much, and yeah, he's not wearing a ring, because I saw one of the hands that was raised before had a wedding ring on it, but he doesn't. I mean, all these picky little points you keep bringing up, they don't mean nothing. What's going on here? I'm, I'm trying to tell you, you're making a big mistake, you people. This kid is a liar. I know it. I know all about them. I feel like the people that stood up might Listen be from me. that slum section. They're no good. They're or have no grown up there. Good. I mean, what, what's happening in here? I'm speaking my piece and you... Or like I just having Listen enough me. about his rant about those types of people because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where the we're, kid's we're, from. He deserves a fair trial. Here, his, his type. Well, well, don't you know about them? His type. He's just basing it off his type and where he's from. There's a danger here. These people are dangerous. They're wild. Listen to me. Listen to me. I have. Now sit down and don't open your mouth again. <laughs> Straight to the naughty corner. <laughs> Sit down and shut up. I don't really know what the truth is. I don't suppose anybody will ever really know. But there's that element of doubt there. Nine of us now seem to feel that the defendant is innocent. But we're just 
gambling on probabilities, we may be wrong. We may be trying to let a guilty man go free. I don't know. Nobody really can. But we have a reasonable doubt. You, you're the leader of the cause. What about it? Let's go over it again. We've been over no, it I wanna, again. The I want I want to hear him refute the claims of the woman because I don't think he's tackled the woman yet. The only thing he's tackled was the passing L train and the seconds that takes to come across and how long it passed and how loud it is. The great flannel suit here is bouncing backwards and forwards like a tennis ball. No point in getting nasty. Keep trying to turn this into a contest. Why were you rubbing your nose like that? Well, if it's any of your business, I was rubbing it because it bothers me a little. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it, is it because of your eyeglasses? It is. Now can we get onto something Is it else? because of how tight they are around this section? Those two deep impressions in the sides of your nose. I hadn't noticed that before. That must be annoying. It is very annoying. Oh, I wouldn't know about that. I've never worn eyeglasses. 2020. 2020 vision, baby! <laughs> with the woman who testified that she saw the killing and those same marks on the sides of her nose. Oh, so she wears glasses as well. Just give me a minute. Unless he's an imposter as well. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else noticed that about her. I didn't think of it then, but I've been going over her face in my mind. She had those same marks. She kept rubbing them in court. He's right. But she did do that a lot. This woman was about, uh, about 45 years old. She's making a tremendous effort to look 35. For her first <laughs> Heavy makeup, dyed hair, brand new clothes that should have been worn by a younger woman. No glasses, but women do that. What do you mean, no glasses? How do you know whether she wore glasses? Just because she was rubbing her nose? Now, she had those marks, I saw. But so what? What do you think that means? Listen, I'm getting so sick of you yelling oh, at him. Does, does that mean when she went to bed at night, she had her glasses off and couldn't really see what happened from a distance? Listen, listen, he's, he's right. I saw them too. I was the closest one to her. She had these, uh, these things in the side of her nose. What do you call those uh, on the side? Well, what point are you making here? She had dyed hair, marks on her nose. Well, what does that mean? Could those marks be made by anything other than eyeglasses? No. They couldn't. What about the district attorney? You think he'd pull a trick like that? Have her testify without her glasses? Did you ever see a woman who had to wear glasses and didn't want to because she thinks they spoil her looks? Okay. <laughs> she had marks on her nose. I'm giving you that. From glasses, right? She didn't want to wear them out of the house or people would think she's gorgeous. But when she saw this kid killing his father, she was in the house alone. That's all. Do you wear glasses when you go to bed? No, I don't. No one wears eyeglasses to bed. He had him off, baby. She was Harry Potter style. She had him off. Turning, trying to fall asleep. How do you know? I don't know. I'm guessing. I'm also guessing that she probably didn't put her glasses on when she turned and looked casually out of the window. And she herself testified the killing took place just as she looked out. The lights went off a split second later. She couldn't have had time to put them on there. Wait a Here's another guess. Maybe she honestly thought she saw the boy kill his father. I say she only saw a blur. How do you know what she saw? How does he know all that? To be able to identify a person 60 feet away at night without glasses. The doubt is real. Send someone off to die on evidence like that? Oh, don't give me that. Don't you think the woman might have made a mistake? No. It's not possible. <laughs> no, it's not possible. How? Not guilty. This guy wears glasses. He knows as well. Clark Kent over here knows. You think he's guilty? I think he's guilty. <laughs> oh. Bro, it's 11-1. Give up. No. It went from 11-1 guilty to 11-1 not, not guilty. The switch up. What's the matter with you? I have a reasonable doubt now. 11-1. Because he knows from experience well, with what glasses. What about all the other evidence? What about... All that stuff, the, the, the knife, the, the whole business. Well, you said we could throw out all the other evidence.
Not guilty. 21, I say he's guilty. Ah, uh, still. I want to hear your arguments. I gave you my arguments. We're not convinced. We want to hear them again. We have as much time as it takes. Why don't you take that stuff about the old man? The old man who lived there and heard everything. Or this business about the knife. What, because we found another one exactly like it? The old man saw him right there on the stairs. What's the difference how many seconds it was? No, but they refuted the claims of the old man with the the L-line train and not being able to hear it and his age and his ability to walk. Oh, he's, he walks with a limp and they timed how long it would take to get across. There's no way. The knife falling through a hole in his pocket. You can't prove he didn't get to the door. Sure, you can take all the time, hobble around the room, but you can't prove it. If he's from that section of society as well, from the slums, I guess he won't have access to great clothing or adequate clothing. So he could have a hole in his pocket. Just saying. This business with the glasses? How do you know she didn't have them on? This woman testified in open court. And what about hearing the kid yell? Huh? I'm telling you, I've got all the facts here. Look, he's yelling now. Here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wait. Well, that's it. That's the whole case. Is that kid his son? Wait, wait, wait. Well? No, it's not his son, but... Say something! You lousy bunch of bleeding hearts. It, it, is that kid his nephew or something? Or, or something like that? And the guy that was killed is his brother? You're I don't know. going to intimidate me. I'm I don't know. Because the photo was very obscured. You work your life out. Okay, I, I thought I was reading too much into it there. I think he's just had issues with his kid in the past. And... Not guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not I think guilty. he's... He's so guilty himself about what happened with his son that he can't, he can't see to toss another boy's life away like that. We're ready now. Damn, I can finally breathe. Twelve and O, clean sweep. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> Davis, my name's Picardo. Well, so long. So long. <laughs> They'll probably never see each other again. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Wait, 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 wait. You know what? Like, you know what? It, it, that film, that film deserves the championship. That film deserves, yep, yep, yep. 12 Angry Men, ladies and gentlemen, gets the championship. Deserves it. Deserves it. Fantastic. Masterfully created. Masterfully created. Now, um, just a quick little review at the end here. I'm not going to go into depth like fully because I already commented during um, the film. But I was in awe at the long takes in this movie as well. Like, it, it would have taken long to memorize the amount of lines or the length of lines they had to um deliver in this film um because there was so many long takes of characters conversing with one another and it was fantastically directed because each and every character um had their own identity their own sort of you know blueprint to what they were going to perform in this film and 
each and every one did not disappoint in delivering that and even when there was like one or two characters conversing with one another or if there was one character delivering something to the group um it the shots were so perfectly placed and um in some scenes you get everyone's reactions in the one take as someone was conversating or as someone was giving directions to the group um and that's a testament to how fantastic the direction is and how everyone was actively engaged there wasn't a dull moment in this movie and this would have been made on such a low budget i know it's 1957 um but it's a simple jury room. That's all it takes. Now, I'm interested to see... Um, I believe there's two remakes of this or one remake of this. Um, interested to see how this was remade um, because I feel like this is fantastic right here. Um, it, it's unbelievable. Like, it was such a well-made film and um, you start to uncover little bits and pieces about each character as the film develops and how they react to certain things. Um and you just get to see who they like what they really made of um and oh man this this film was just it's so good it's so it, it it's just it's so good um just how that you know how that doubt starts to be um just thrown in the air and how each and every one start to react to it and it sort of reminded me like dominoes like what each one started to fall to the not guilty slowly and slowly they all started to fall down you know you had 11 to 1 and then they all started jumping ship they all started switching sides um as the doubt was thrown in the air because immediately you see this kid at the start you get one good glance at him you get one good glance at him as the viewer um and he thinks to himself he looks like an innocent kid and you never know you do like that that guy presented his case well i think davis he presented it you just never know he could have done the killing you never know but it has to be beyond a reasonable doubt and i think that's what everyone in that room um bar a few um didn't understand they didn't understand what beyond a reasonable doubt meant and as davis started you know throwing that doubt in the air started critically thinking about each of the moments it was just fantastic to see and yeah this film deserves that nine out of ten rating on imdb in my opinion um, I loved it. I loved it. I hope you guys enjoy my reaction. As always, been your boy Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.